Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And there is Heroes Jubilee again. <laughs> this time we're going into Normal Battle 2, which wants you to use a dark nuking team. And for those who were new and didn't watch the previous video that I did yesterday about going over what Jubilee is, is please go and watch that and it'll help you get an understanding of what this event is and how to do it and why you should do it but with that said let's get some disclaimers out of the way that i like to put up number one is your results will vary because i have every unit i've been playing for three years straight i have a lot of teams and a lot of options and dupes that you don't have access to so whatever teams I'm showing, please use as a just a generic guide and then build upon that with what you have available in your own box. You're not going to have every single unit. You got to make some substitutions. I don't know what you have in your box, so you got to make you got to use your big brain and figure out what's going to work best for you in this setup. Disclaimer number 2 is that these are the units I use for protection gauge and these are the units I use for skill points. I'm going to see those a lot. And disclaimer number three is don't forget to go into your Town of Tempest and optimize your dark magic building, especially with the new EX Unbounds, two of them being dark. They're going to help you do a bit more stats, give you a bit more stats on your dark nukers. But with that said, let's jump in. All right, Normal Battle 2 is another AoE fight, this time with wanting a dark team. These bats are not nearly as tanky as stage 1. They only have 95,000 HP, so they're missing 100k HP, essentially. So they're not nearly as difficult to kill, but that also means they're more susceptible to you killing them on accident if you were attempting to use a little bit too much power. This is a stage that has pierce resistance. I think I was getting the two confused between normal 1 and normal 2, so you're not meant to use a pierce team here. You still can, though. You can very easily overpower 30% pierce resistance, but that's up to you if you want to go about that. They don't really do anything else. Defense, guard rate, pierce, so that's how they make themselves a little bit tankier, but you could get unlucky, quote-unquote, and just not hit that 80% chance to guard, and you could accidentally kill one of them if things don't go your way. They do also have poison, so that, that is the one gimmick that they do have. All of them poison you on turn two, so if you have a way to dodge that, either the four star Gobta, or the Dark Shion, or or the new Lord's Ambition effect from the new Protector guy, he can negate that as well. Alright, so the first max team that I'm gonna use is the New Year's Blessing team plus Summer Memories Millum, being a dark AoE character with cheap buffs. Uh, she's not skill fuse, not that it would matter really, because she would give herself 5% attack, and no one else on this team is dark, so they wouldn't benefit. But New Year's Shion is going to give her guaranteed crit, guaranteed synergy. New Year's Reamer is going to give the rainbow orbs, and then Millum and Shinsha are going to give the other buffs that we're going to need. And then the four-star Gobta will give us the poison dodge, so we don't take that. So the entire goal now is to just take one damages across the board, just like normal one, and then hit the 1.4 million damage cap. So turn one, we, let, we put Millum up front to be over Dark Millum, so we could have full protection gauge in the back. That's pretty much the only reason. So we're going to swap Dark Millum out. We're going to swap uh, Shinsha out of here. We have protection gauge units underneath Gobta and Millum. And we're going to send these. We don't do a lot of damage if they guard. Four Reamer Orbs is what you're really looking for. And hopefully a Blue or something along the lines of that. Something to get you... Or actually just a full six hand. So these two Millum Orbs are fine for the, for the most part. I mean, we do have access to Shion, so we're going to convert it anyways, but I'd like to steal that one blue orb just to give us a little bit extra gauge, because it's what we're going to need. So now we'll swap them out, we'll use the orb steal, we'll use the single alt swap because it's free and it gives gauge increase to the oranges and the rainbows, and then we stole that one blue orb, so we have five milims and a Shinsha. We'll use Shion to convert that one blue into an orange so we can send the full hand. And this will get us the EX alt and barely enough points to do the full buff alt with Shinsha and Milum and Milum skills. Just barely, though. 
So the poison dodge, there we go, taking one hit, no poison, one hit, no poison, and one more hit. So now we're ready to go, we've got access to Xion again, that's good. And then we'll bring Milim in for Gopta, because he's served his purpose. And then one, two, and three, leaves us with five points left over. And then we'll use Xion, and we'll lower their HP down a little bit more. Because they have such a high chance to guard, I'm not too concerned with it, but remember that there is that 20% chance that they don't guard and Milim just straight up murderizes them. So that can happen. So one, two, three, four, and then the the 200% orb does 36,000. Didn't even uh, guard that, but then she does 620k, which is more than, more than enough damage to get our damage cap. So 1.9 million, zero damage taken within three turns. So that is the first max team that I have. Let's move on to the second max score team. All right, the second max score team I have for you is quite a whaley team because it's using three of the brand new EX Unbound characters, Guy, Isis, and Milum. So Guy is converting all orbs to green. He's got the element resistance down. He's got the Lord's Ambition skill, which will stack weakness resistance down on the enemies, but also keep us safe from the poisons. We don't need to bring Gopta or anyone for that. Isis is here for damage buff. Guy is here for his damage buff. Milim is here for her damage buff. New Milim is here to nuke. Single target nuke. And then Soka honestly doesn't really do anything here. I just like Soka. But we, I needed a character with protection gauge underneath, so I brought Soka. You don't have to bring her. You could bring anybody. That slot is free and empty. We are also using Space Milim under our support for Isis. It could be her or Guy, doesn't matter. We just need 36 skill points, so we could use Milim's Rainbow Convert turn 1, because we do have three Octogram Demon Lord characters, Milim, Milim, and Guy. So, turn 1, 36 skill points. We're going to bring Milim in for Isis, and then we'll use her full convert to rainbows, which is going to act as six blues, six oranges, and six greens, all rolled up into one. Perfect. Boom. Love to see it. And then we'll, I think, either spread the damage or we'll send it all against one. All right, we send it against one. You can see that we're doing quite a bit more damage here, even though they're guarding, which is good because we have a single target nuker with Milim, so we don't need all three of the bats to stay alive. Ideally, we would only have one at the end, so we could take even less damage to maximize the, or minimize the the amount of damage we're gonna take. But Rainbow again, because she can do it twice, which is crazy to think about. So there, we got three orbs for her. We'll use Guy here to give the extra green buff that we have applied. So that's alt gauge on greens is the charm that I'm using for him. Just helps us get the guaranteed EX alt for Milim. The middle bat is dead. They're taking extra damage for the element resistance down. And then after this turn is over, you can see we dodge the poison, dodge the poison because the Lord's Ambition doesn't actually apply to us right now. And so it doesn't actually hurt us. It's, it's still active right here, you can see it because it outlasts our Lord's Ambition skill, but we didn't actually take damage when it was procced because we were still immune, which is cool. I didn't realize that would happen. But now it's turn three, we're ready to nuke. We've got a lot of points and then we'll bring Isis in. We've used the dark buff. We've used the synergy buff not dark buff, but the alt buff. And then we'll use Isis skill. We'll use Guy to lower their element resistance again. And then we'll single target nuke the one of the bats, probably yeah, the right one because he's lower HP. And then we'll send everything else and finish up the other one. But we're going to do plenty of damage right here. 1.69 million because we're within that three to five turn gap where the unbound characters get additional damage. And then Dark Milum still did almost 700,000 by herself right there. So that's pretty impressive. But we took one damage throughout the fight. We did 2.4 million here. So that is another max score team. But it is, again, quite whaley. Because it needs three brand new characters. Okay, so for people who have access to the team, you can run the Overlord team. It's not going to get you max score because you're going to go past turn three and you're going to take damage. But you can certainly hit the damage cap using stupid shout here, which we're trying to give her a reason to exist right now. Please bear with me. Uh, Overlord Rimuru, Nabe, Dark Milim, because she's got 
uh, the dark attack buff for Shoutier, who already has an alt buff, so we don't need to use Milam's skill, if anything. Eins is here for his despair skill, which gives extra protection gauge on greens and is guaranteed crit if we need to use it. Overlord Shizu is here for her alt swap and her massive support buff. And then Shoutier is able to rush her own alt with the despair skill, which is cool. And also she has the 80% alt up and 80% defense down, which isn't as strong as you would like. All right, we're going to speed this one up because we're going past a few turns and I got two more teams after this to show you. So turn one, we're just going to send the four blues and we're going to pray that we get some better orbs that are mostly greens on turn two. So one, two, three, four. We are wanting to full AOE here, so we're not looking to kill any of the bats. But you certainly can, because by the time we hit the nuke turn, we <laughs> we do more than enough damage. So here, we're good. We got um, mostly greens. We can convert this with Nabe, so that's great. So we'll bring her in for Milim. We'll use the blue and the orange convert. That's the only points that we have. But we do have access to Rimuru, who's going to give us a lot of points back on this turn. So this will be nice. And then we'll again send this. Uh, try not to kill. So maybe spread your damage out send your full hands against each bat individually we don't have anyone to dodge the poison which surprisingly we uh we didn't really take as much as i would think i don't remember having poison dodge on i think we just got lucky there uh but now we have to orb change quite a bit so convert convert so boom boom and then we've got 120 points we need to use the despair skills so let's alt rush with Shout here that gets her a first level alt. We'll reset their skills with Rimuru, and then we'll bring Ainz in to help us get extra protection gauge so we can continue to cycle Rimuru, because that's going to be kind of important. And then we'll target a different bat and send this hand of orbs, because it's we're going to get stronger and stronger every time we use Rimuru, so make sure you don't accidentally kill one of the bats if you are lacking some power or your support buffs are not as strong as what I'm showing right here. So turn four, we're gonna alt swap away. We're gonna alt rush her again. And then with these three orbs, we'll get her EX alt next turn. Honestly, I've, we probably could have nuked here and we probably still could have hit the damage cap. Cause when you see the damage that we do on turn five, you're gonna be like, well, we didn't need to go that far. So, eh, eh. If that's what you want to do, then certainly you can go at it. But in this clip, I went to turn five, so we're going to show turn five. So another stack of Rimuru to reset. All the despair skills are active, so we have max points and another Rimuru next turn. And we'll send these orbs against the right bat. And turn five, we'll be ready to nuke at full power. So, okay, cheeky counter there. Cool. We're still only taking one damage. The despair skills are doing a little tiny bit of chip damage. Not that it's really important, but hey, it, it is what it is. We have excess points, so we're going to use Milam's alt buff, even though it's useless. We're going to get that 25% attack for dark allies, though. And if she's not skill fused, then you don't need Milam at all. And she's only here to be an orb changer. So, Rimuru, stack, cool. We use the Ainz skill as well to give ourselves guarantee crits, and then we'll AoE nuke, and this will do way too much damage. Way too much damage. Yeah, almost a million each. And we need to do 1.4. So this is why, like, if you wanted to nuke on turn 4 with a normal ult, you would have been probably relatively fine right there. Probably being the keyword. But there you go. There's the Overlord team. It certainly works if you have access to it. Alright, the next team, we're starting to reach the bottom of the barrel. We're cutting down on the EX characters. We've got Exalted Champion Velzard and Veldora. We've got Visions of Coleus, Violet, and Rimuru, who's going to be our quote-unquote nuker. And then we've got Light Millum and Octogram Lumi. Light Millum has the attack buff, and Lumi has the stacking alt and the AoE buff. So, I mean, we should be able to do okay damage here. It's just not going to be super amazing. So turn one, because it's a special convert, we could, we can, and I think we do use Violet's Orb Change turn one, and that'll give us quite a bit of Velzard to access next turn. And then we'll bring in Coleus Rimuru. Eventually, maybe. 
There we go. We'll bring him in because he is the nuking character. And we'll bring Lumi in because she's got extra protection gauge for the first three turns. And we'll bring her in for, Lu or for Milum. And then we'll send these orbs. 53 points. We'll have another 30 from the passive from Velzard. So we'll have 83 or whatever math works out to. And then we can use a few different things here. We've got a lot of blues, which is great. So we could use the rainbow skill here and not have to worry about it. We're looking to nuke on this with on turn three. So we do have to use a number of skills to even attempt to get a, an okay damage number. Um, and we don't have rewind, which you could bring rewind instead of Milum probably, and it would maybe work a bit better. But I didn't want to bring the hero just for the purpose of maybe you don't have her. So convert those orbs to rainbows, perfect. We'll then convert that to green because we have a gauge increase on the green that we're gonna need here. I believe it's skill points, I think, being the keyword. Think being the keyword. And that'll put us over 110 points for the nuke, which means that we can use like two different things. So there's the poison, we have no way to dodge that. Unfortunate, oh well. And now we're ready to nuke with the EX alt for Coleus Rimuru. 127 points, so let's use one stack of the alt buff and the magic buff. So we didn't even use Milum's skill. If we had brought the hero, we probably could have gotten the EX alt and used Violet's buff and sent him away, but we didn't. So that could be a strategy if you have access to that and you want to do it instead of this. He does 236k. We didn't really have that many buffs going on, so it's not super impressive. But it's not a terrible score when you look at it. We did half of the damage cap. We took a little bit of damage. It's still turn 3. 113k.9 is still fine if you have to use this kind of team, and there are ways to improve this team as well. So don't think that this is just like the only one you could ever use. Alright, and as always, sad 5-star team. No EX characters on the battle line. We've got Protector Toa. We've got Soka. Now she's actually going to do something. She's going to be our turn 1 converter. Geld is here to hopefully maybe give away orbs to Octagram Lumi, who we're going to make our nuker. We've got Space Rimuru. If he's skill fused, he's got extra alt resistance down, which is cool. If he's not, yeah, don't worry about it. He's still here. He's still got a 40% attack buff. The hero is back for the rewind and the crits. And then Lumi has her own stacking buffs that will work out. Mm, it, it'll work out okay. So turn one, we're going to use Soka's convert. That's why she's here. That's, I think, why I had her on the other team, because I probably used this team first before doing the... Uh, uh, the Millum and Guy team, where she just didn't do anything <laughs> except look pretty. So I'll bring Lumi in, and then we'll bring the hero in. We're going to use the rewind to make sure we can get as much points as possible. A double Toa would be great here because we would have access to 40 or 80 points plus the new higher cap of 150 if we can get there. I don't know if we actually do or not, and especially not with a hand that looks like this because we don't really have a way to get around it. So we could have used maybe the Geld giveaway skill, but I'm just going to send these blues. So let's rewind and then do the AOE buff and then just burn the blues out of here. They'll give us an okay amount of alt gauge. And now we have a double Toa, which is cool. And now we just need a few orbs for Lumi. It's just that I can't use everything that I want to here. And even this hand is not super great because it's no blue orbs. We burned them all out last turn. So, not ideal by any means. And you could use a double Toa here, and I think I do. Mm, but I don't actually need to, though, because we've got five orbs. We only need two more orbs for Lumi to get her alt. So yeah, we're just going to send this. This run could have gone so much better, but unfortunately the RNG killed me, and I didn't really want to re-record re it. But we do have the Lumi alt. Okay, cool. We do have access to at least one Toa buff, so that's an extra 40 points, plus 107. So we can still do okay things here, right? So let's take Geld out. We'll use the first buff for Rimuru, which is skill fuse, so he's getting the extra alt resistance down. So if he's not skill fused, your nuke is not going to do as much damage. 
but another Toa gives us 92, which gives us the crit buff. And we can do one more stack of the AoE buff as well, which is really impactful. And then you could either send the orbs or send the alt. We're going to send the orbs first just to get their health pools a little bit lower. And then we'll send the Lumi alt and she'll do damage. Not great damage, but she'll do damage. <laughs> How much damage, you ask? Mm, about 83k. Certainly not great, but it's not a great team and it's full of old five stars. What would you expect? But there are five different teams you can use to take on Normal Battle 2. Many, many more exist, so if you have found anything else that works that I did not cover, please put it down in the comments below so other people can see that. But that's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.